All right. Uh, hi, everyone, and um, glad to see so many of you here. Uh, my name is Pyry Takala. I'm the CEO of uh, True AI. And I'd like to tell you briefly today about uh, a little bit about our company uh, and uh, hopefully a little bit more about how to build self-learning conversation systems. And uh, as mentioned, if you have a burning question, feel free to interrupt. Otherwise, let's have a, a chat also at the end. Uh, so what do we do at True AI? Let's start with that. We are um, a bunch of deep learning researchers. I'm sure most of you at least uh, know what deep learning is these days. And we are building machines that can uh, converse. And we're starting th uh, this in the domain of customer service. Uh, in the future, we are, of course, thinking of going also much beyond this. Uh, so you remember uh, the experience when you wake up in, uh, sorry, when you are I watching, let's say, Netflix in the middle of the night. Some, something goes wrong with your Netflix subscription and your favorite series just stops. Well, what do you do? Of course, you uh, tweet to the customer service of Netflix and they fix the problem in one minute. And you just keep watching. Actually, usually in customer service, this doesn't really happen. Usually, you end up pinging probably Netflix or, or whoever you are trying to contact many, many times. You don't get hold of the right operator. Uh, if you look at the customer ex experience uh, kind of industry in, in uh, this year, you have a tiny fraction, which is the customer service industry, but much larger uh, fraction of the industry is actually the customer disservice industry. Um, and it's, it's really um, uh, interesting to see how, how you have these huge waiting times. Even if you are just uh, tweeting a simple question, let's in this case to Xbox support, maybe uh, after six hours uh, you are told that, hey, you can sign in and fix the problem yourself. So, I think you are getting uh, the idea of what we, are, what we want to solve at True AI. And I think the obvious solution to many of these problems is actually that we want to automate uh, conversations in customer service. Uh, and it's fairly easy to do, actually. And this is, this is what I'm going to, to tell you how to do it. You, the easy way to do it is just you just get all the possible questions that the customer can uh, ask, and you write the possible answers, and then you have just the table and you can look up everything. Very simple. Not quite. Uh, actually, if you are starting to think about it a little bit more, maybe uh, you want to have, uh, you don't want to write, let's say, a billion uh, different questions and answers. Maybe you actually want to use something like uh, expressions to write this. And if you have played in the kind of domain of, of um, automatic dialogues, maybe you have come across something like AI ML, which is the kind of um, language to write these kind of expressions. Maybe you say that high name, if, if uh, let's say hi and some, some kind of name comes in, then you respond with something like hi and then you uh, repeat the person's name, for instance. Well, uh, that's nice, but then if you say, let's say in the first comment, uh, hi Peter, and then uh, that person asks you, how, how are you? Then you actually want to remember that that person's name is Peter, and w you can't really use just simple expressions. So what do you start doing? Is you start constructing expression trees. You say that, okay, if I'm in this part of the tree, maybe this is what I want to do. Uh, and um, of course, uh, constructing these uh, expression trees can be also get get a little bit tedious. There's still a lot of things that you want to construct. So maybe you want to build some kind of machine learning models uh, modules as well. Maybe you want to recognize, uh, let's say, what are the named entities, uh, or uh, maybe you want to uh, understand what is the intent. What does the uh, person asking something actually want to achieve? And then you can maybe have another expression tree just uh, figuring out how to, how to answer to this. And um, if you start doing this, maybe, you, you, maybe that starts to work a little bit. But uh, what you start doing now is that you start probably constructing more trees and more adding more modules and adding more trees. And uh, all of a sudden, you probably realize that you have spent 10 years constructing this. Or if you have a huge engineering team, maybe it's a little bit faster. Um, for instance, the AI ML, which is kind of the original uh, way to construct these expressions, uh, the latest uh, file that I found had 40,000 expressions in it. So uh, you can imagine that's maybe not the easiest way to do it. And of course, you can imagine maybe something changes in the organization, um, and maybe you need to change actually one of your answers. So you can imagine the amount of maintenance that uh, is involved. 
So I think where I'm, I'm getting at with this is that you can use these kind of systems to build very simple kind of chatbot-like systems, but in general, rule-based systems and this kind of expression trees uh, fail to really give a good um, dialogue experience. Um, if you want to test something like this, there's, there are tons of, of examples outside. For instance, IBM has their demo online. And it works quite nicely if you answer every single question correctly, but uh, this is where you end up very uh, kind of uh, quickly with it. So um, as kind of uh, consumers or as, as uh, people who talk to uh, conversational machines, we don't really uh, want systems that uh, don't understand us. Uh, and that you have to build uh, for a long time before they start giving any reasonable answers. What we really want are systems that are learning, that are capable of looking how do humans interact and are able to um, interact in the same way. What we really need is of course true AI. And um, I'll tell you a, a small vision of what we are, uh, what we, what we are uh, building at the moment. So what we are doing is that when Alice asks Virgin Media on Twitter, why is my internet stuck? What does the operator get? We are giving automatic suggestions uh, to the operator. We are saying, hey, you could say this, this or this. We are not actually um, giving automatic responses to many, qu many difficult questions. Why? Because the technology to do that is not exactly there yet. We are getting there, but answering every possible question automatically is not possible using today's technology. You can, you, you can answer simple questions, but for most, it's actually m more sensible to give automatic suggestions to operators, making their uh, job much easier. And of course, we give a confidence measure. You know how good the uh, suggestion is roughly. If it's, let's say, 99%, in that case, we may want to send it automatically. But we really keep the human operator always in control. You can click on this and you will get the um, uh, possible response here, you can still edit it. It's, it's uh, kind of an easier way to go towards something fully automated. And of course, if the questions are very easy, if someone is saying, why is my internet stuck? Uh, that's actually a question that repeats, maybe not in exactly this form, but in very similar form a lot of times. We can actually um, uh, respond to the whole dialogue. We can go through it automatically. So this kind of a system is, of course, nice. It can save a lot of agent time. The customers who are trying to reach customer service are getting much faster responses. Who doesn't want that? And of course, you can get also better responses because the operators can really uh, focus on the harder cases when they don't have to uh, apologize to every customer in the same uh, way. So uh, of course, a lot of uh, companies, uh, organizations could benefit from something like this. Um, and it, it's kind of obvious this, this would be great, uh, at least to, to most of the customers that we've spoken to. But why haven't you really seen anything like this before? The reason is that it's, it's very new technology. You, if you think of artificial intelligence, it started maybe in the 50s. And kind of the traditional methods were used to, for instance, to uh, solve something like chess in the 1990s. Machine learning came uh, along maybe around in the 1990s, at least, as a more active research field. I think IBM Watson would be a nice example of how, how you can combine kind of traditional machine learning methods to build something actually very impressive, at least in a kind of uh, small uh, task. And uh, of course, deep learning started fairly recently. So in 2006, 2007, you started having the first deep learning successes. AlphaGo is perhaps the most uh, kind of famous recent one where, uh, for those of you who don't know Go, it's a, an ancient, uh, I guess, Chinese or, or Asian uh, game. And um, the, the Google spot was able to perf outperform the best human on, the, on Earth uh, in that. Uh, and recurrent neural networks is the technology that we are using. It's something that is a subfield of deep learning. Uh, and it's something that people haven't been able to use even in the, when the deep learning revolution began. We started uh, getting papers uh, from recurrent neural networks in 2011 uh, or so. Uh, and now people do know how, to, how the basic kind of models work, but there's a, it's a very active research uh, idea. And that's what we are leveraging um, to build this tech. Just to give you an, a small idea of, of what kind of things we are doing, we are, we are using very heavy, heavy deep learning research. And I just wanted to, to check what kind of level of knowledge in the audience uh, we have. So, so just a kind of interesting question. Who knows actually what this uh, image represents? 
If you know, can you raise your hand? I think we don't have many many deep learning uh, people in the in the audience in that case. So it's an LSTM. Uh, I think we had a couple hands hands up. Um, so yeah, we are we are really uh, taking a lot of research out of papers and uh, putting this research into our product. We are experimenting with a lot of a lot of uh, of our own ideas also. But essentially, uh, just to explain briefly how our uh, tech works, we read some kind of query. So the query can be the latest question or the whole conversation. Um, we, are, we have something called neural attention, which means that we can focus actually on the part in, in the query that is most important for answering. Um, after that, our recurrent neural network can form something called a meaning representation. Uh, someone calls, it, calls this also a dot vector, so it forms kind of a computational uh, um, representation of, of um, what, is, what is important in the, in the conversation. It can include something like sentiment, intentions, key facts, but we don't really tell our system what to learn. It just uh, figures out from a lot of data that these kind of things are, are what it should keep in its memory. Uh, and uh, of course after this it can suggest responses and the responses that we are suggesting, they are not template responses, they are re kind of cr uh, created in a human style. So they may even include casual language, emoticons and so on. They are not, not templated because that's what you don't really want as a customer. And um, our setup is of course completely machine learning based. So what we do is that we take millions of historical conversation logs. Because we are working with uh, companies, I was doing before academic research and actually there are no good data sets for this to be honest. Uh, with companies, luckily, the largest customer service organizations have gathered data for years and they, they do have millions of conversations, which is, of course, a very fruitful uh, field for deep learning and machine learning research. Once we have these conversation logs, our algorithm learns how does a human typically respond uh, and uh, it can start uh, outputting these kind of uh, responses. And of course, the, the ultimate customer, who's the kind of operator, they are uh, getting these uh, suggestions through our uh, API to their existing CRM. So if they are using something like Intercom or Hootsuite, it just integrates there. It's very easy for them. They just give us their access, uh, their data, and uh, they start getting responses. Um, this is just a kind of quick overview to the tech. But uh, I also want to point out that uh, we are doing this in customer service at the moment. But this kind of technology is not customer service specific. It's actually specific to conversations in general, uh, or uh, maybe even, or even sequences, uh, regardless of data format. But it can really be applied to, to any kind of conversations. Uh, customer service is really just the starting point because there's a lot of data and it's uh, good also for a startup to start there. But you can imagine how often are you actually responding to a Google, for instance me responding to David, thanks for the reminder and see you tomorrow. Maybe you have even seen something like this in, if you are using Google's inbox. They are using similar technology as us. And of course uh, over time, and I don't think this is fully possible today, but uh, over time this kind of technology can be used to automate any kind of conversation, even let's say medical conversation if you want to converse on the phone uh, with your doctor. So the possibilities of this kind of tech are, are very, uh, very wide. We are still in early stages of course uh, and something like this is not yet possible but there's a lot of research on how to do this in the future. Um, so I guess this more or less concludes uh, my introduction to our company and uh, the kind of technologies that we are using. I wanted to uh, tell you briefly that we are uh, looking still for a couple of uh, employees. So if something like this is, might be interesting for you, we are looking for people who are interested in doing really cutting edge uh, AI research. For instance, my research has been already uh, featured in MIT Tech Review. Uh, we have a team who has worked in the top labs of the, um, of the world in deep learning. And of course, we offer an environment where you can really challenge yourself. So if you think uh, this is interesting for you, uh, feel free to uh, send us an application. Uh, we are looking for deep learning research engineers and also a full stack developer and internships at the moment. Um, so that concludes my talk. If you have any questions, uh, I'd love to hear them. <laughs>